Here we have a USB flash drive that came in for repair data recovery. Not repair, data recovery. Nobody mails over a flash drive for the sake of repairing that drive. How much is the flash drive? $10? $15? Because we still have some viewers in the comments that write, why did that person mail that flash drive for repair? They can buy another one for $10. You should be smarter than this. Nobody mails a flash drive for the sake of mailing a flash drive. Look at this. A Hiroshima of all Hiroshimas. Look at this. That's a USB 3.0 drive. The blue tip. And look at this mess. The connector is bent. But the repair attempt, wow. The repair attempt is worse than my tweezers that fell on the floor. What can you do? I do not see any missing components, and that's a good thing. The chip, for the most part, looks good. I did not test the pins. But it looks like we have a solid on all the pins. We're good here. Flip the board and we have nothing. We have nothing on back of the board. So we do not need to worry much about what's going on on the back. We have the controller chip, but the controller looks intact. I do not see anything wrong, but it does not hurt to go over the pins and make sure everything's solid. Only takes a minute. Perfect. So where do we start? We're going to start by desoldering the connector completely. We're going to check on the pads and most likely use a 2.0 connector. Connect VCC, ground, D minus and D plus to recover data. We're not going to use this connector because it's bent. So even if we connected the pins, we do not know if the pins are broken from inside the connector. So we're going to completely remove and trash the connector. We do not need it. Look at this Braidwick, the best Braidwick in the market. I mentioned this in many videos before. Just compare our Braidwick to the ones being sold on eBay or Amazon and you'll see. It does not fall apart and it makes the job a lot easier. We do not need to desolder the holes because we're going to be using the front pads only. So why bother? If you are a hobbyist or in the same type of business, you can purchase the Braidwick, the Flux, and all your tools from our site. Just log in to northwishfix.com, click on shop, add to cart, check out, pay, and we almost always ship out same day. I keep mentioning this for all new subscribers to the channel. We're going to apply original Amtec Flux, Amtec 559. And original Amtec Flux is not sold on eBay or Amazon or AliExpress. You can buy it from us. We are a distributor of the Flux. 
and you can buy in retail or wholesale. Let's do the fourth wire and then we'll worry about wire number three. And we did wire number four. And now as far as wire number three goes, we're gonna have to use our anti-glare light for this so we can get rid of the glare. And it looks like that pad is broken from right over here. This line right here, right there. So what I can do is grind this via or this trace and we're gonna solder the wire onto it. So wire number three is done. And now we have a total of four wires. What we have to do now is find the socket. I have a lot of salvaged 2.0 sockets and we're gonna solder the wires onto the socket. I have a socket right here. Yeah, I have this one right here that we can use. It has four pins. That's wire number two. We're gonna do wire number three, wire number four. All right, nice. We have one, two, three, and four. And now we have a piece of art that looks like this. All right. Are we gonna be able to recover files? We'll see. I do not see any lights on that flash drive and I do not think the computer detected it right. I did not hear that tone. Nothing. Let's go under the microscope and do some measurements. We're gonna check to see if we have five volts going in. Let's check for five volts right over, right over here. What's on my probe? And we have five volts. We have five volts and we have zero volts. <laughs> it means the resistor is blown. We have five here, we have five here, but we have zero here and zero here. We got it. The flash drive wanna play games? We can play games. Now we need to know the value of those resistors if we can still read them. 
Okay, so we have one R0 and we have one R0. Let's remove those resistors and we're going to replace them. Okay, so we removed both resistors. So since the two resistors are connecting in parallel and each one of them is one ohm, it means the total value of both is 0 0.5 ohms. The size of the resistor is 603. And I grabbed that resistor from the SMD books that we carry and sell. Right here. We have about 8,500 components in this book. And right now I grabbed the one ohm resistor. We're going to grab two of them. All right, and we're done. This wire is good, and it's going to the right pad. This wire is good. This wire is good. And this wire is good. So let's try it. Let's try it. Oh, you're here. Booze. Mm. Okay. Moment of truth. Are we going to be able to read files? And smoke. Smoke means we have a short. It's not a short because of the wires, but something else is going on. Look at this. The resistors, blue. Both of them. We have a short circuit. I disconnected the drive, meter in diode mode. I want to place one probe on ground and the other one here. And look at this, we have a short circuit. So the short circuit here is what caused the smoke and those two resistors to blow. Now a short circuit can happen due to one of the caps that you see in the front here because resistors do not short, but capacitors short. One end of the cap is ground and the other end is not ground. So if a capacitor shorts out, then the whole cap becomes ground and it creates a short. So either one of the capacitors are shortened to ground or the other thing is the NAND chip could be shortened to ground. Another possibility is the controller chip may be shortened to ground or any one of the caps that we see on the back here. We're going to have to inject voltage and monitor the board under a thermal camera and see where the short is coming from. But we did a good job on the wires. We're going to keep the wires like they are right now. And we're going to have to inject voltage right here and monitor to see which component is getting hot. Let me turn on the voltage injection tool, NF.short. If you do not already have one, you can purchase directly off our site. We're going to jump over to our thermal camera. The flash drive is right over here. That's the NAND chip. And we're going to inject voltage at the other end of the resistors and see what is getting hot on the board. If I touch my probe, look at this. It's not the NAND chip, but it could be a capacitor nearby or it could be the controller chip on the back. Okay. We have a short here, short here, so one of those two. Yeah, that's basically it, one of those two. 
If neither of them are causing the short, then we're going to have to flip the board and look on the back side. But let's start with this one. And let's see, do we still have a short? And look at this, the short is gone. We do not have a short anymore. Nice, nice. Wow. Let's go ahead and replace those resistors again. And let's try this one more time. Yes. I did hear the tone. And we got it. Antivirus came up. But I want to see the files. Yes, I got it. We got it. We got it. Right there. Wow. Wow. I'm able to read all the files. Look at this. I'm going to disconnect. And a lot of people do not like to disconnect when they see files, but I'm so confident. I'm going to disconnect. All right. I'm going to reconnect. And let's go back right here. Look at this. Right there. That's the customer's drive and a lot of files. We did it. I'm able to read all the files and I'm not going to disconnect anymore. I'll just lay the drive down on the bench, start the backup, transfer the files to another flash drive, invoice, and mail this back to the customer. I do not want to yank the cable. Let me put something heavy over it and we're good. That's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think. Leave it down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll do something else in the next video.